Hi, I'm glad you could join me in my study. The doctrine of the atonement is like a jewel which has multiple facets to it. Penal substitution is one of the most important facets of a doctrine of the atonement. But another facet of the atonement is the theme of redemption. According to this motif, Christ's death uh, frees us, redeems us from bondage to sin, uh, death, corruption, and evil, thereby liberating us from Satan's power. You'll remember that redemption is a metaphor for the ransom payment that was made to release slaves or to buy back prisoners of war. Contemporary ransom theorists emphasize that the ransom is not paid to Satan, rather the ransom is paid to God himself. In this case, the ransom is the debt to divine justice that we owe. Christ pays the debt of uh, satisfying God's justice on our behalf. And so talk of ransom is really a metaphor for penal substitution. And by satisfying the demands of God's justice, we in turn are freed by Christ's death from the bondage to sin and death and Satan and mortality. Now, in addition to this, the theme of redemption needs to be supplemented with other motifs or uh, themes that I don't have time to talk about. For example, new creation would also be a theme that would belong to a biblical doctrine of the atonement. The forgiveness of sins, the satisfaction of divine justice is, as we've seen, a legal transaction. And being declared legally not guilty does nothing to effect a moral transformation in one's own life. In addition to that legal justification, there needs to be a, an ongoing work of sanctification on the part of the Holy Spirit as we are regenerated, indwelt, and filled with the Holy Spirit and so conformed more and more to the image of Christ. And so redemption in the legal sense needs to be supplemented with an ongoing uh, redeeming power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to make us in the image of Christ and conformed to the kind of character that Christ wants us to have.